Hi, welcome to the next assembly video for the RepRap Perugia Mendel Iteration 2. In this video, we're going to assemble the Greg's extruder. Um, in the last video, we assembled the J-head hot end, and uh, now that that's dry, um, we can go ahead and install it into the extruder. So let's go ahead and get started with that first. And um, Now, this extruder has notches on the top. And what those notches are for is when it when you put it into the bottom to the hole in the bottom of the extruder, like so, you'll run bolts M3 bolts into the side here, and those three those bolts will will um, will go on the side of these grooves to hold it into place. Um, I have found um, some um, the very first time I ever installed one of these. Um, I did have problems with the M3 bolts. The extruder was actually um, popping off of the bolts, or the hot end was popping off of the bolts. And so um, if you do ever have any problems like that, all you need to do is drill these out to four millimeters and then uh, put M4 bolts in here. The M4 bolts are actually kind of hard to get in there because they don't actually really fit very well into these grooves. But once you do get them in there, this thing isn't going anywhere. So just to let you know that that, that is a possibility. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and put it in here in this direction so the wires are on this side. And uh, this is going to take the uh, 30 millimeter M3 bolts. Kind of a tight fit. Might be able to press it in there. Yeah, no, I don't know. It's a pretty tight fit, so I'm just gonna screw it in. Oh, and I'll have the J head slip out a little. Another M3 30 millimeter bolt on the other side. Yeah, I'll be able to push that one in. I've also found that once once you get the lock nuts on the other side and you can press these down, it'll actually kind of tighten. Tighten the, the grasp on the uh, hot end that way too. Okay, and then on the other side, we will run the uh, two M3 lock nuts. Go ahead and tighten it up. Oh yeah, so, you know, not only are the bolts going through those grooves to keeping it from popping out, but also because I tighten this up really good, it's actually clasping it and I, the hot end isn't even wiggling. So that's really good. All right. Okay, now that that's in place, um, next we can put the hobbed bolt. In this case, we're using a hyena. Let's go over this real quick, uh, the parts we're using. For the rest of the assembly, we have the Greg's extruder, the large gear, the small gear, the Greg's idler, three roller bearings, a small piece of smooth rod, um, long, we're using the really the really long uh, M3 bolts, these are probably about as long as you can get in M3 bolts, three M8 washers, three M3 washers, two M8 nuts, three uh, M3 nuts 
Um, we already used uh, two of the M3 lock nuts, and we'll have one additional lock nut for the idler. We have three 14 millimeter M3 bolts, one 10 millimeter M3 bolt, and um, we have uh, two springs for the tension on the uh, idler, and one more 30 millimeter bolt here for the idler as well. So um, let's go ahead and install the hobbed bolt, and this is a hyena hobbed bolt. So the nut is a little bit larger in diameter than the M8 nuts for some reason. I'm not exactly sure why. It's the lock nut that it came with. And so I had a hard time kind of squeezing it in there, but it is a really nice fit in that large gear, which is going to work out really well. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and install the bearings. One goes on, on the flat side of the extruder, and the other goes on the, um, the contoured side. We'll need to put two washers, M8 washers, on the hob bolt, and the large gear will go on the flat side. And now, um, at this point, you may want to make some adjustments. Um, what you want to do is you want to move this uh, lock nut in or out to make sure that the, the grooves on the hobbed bolt here line up with the hole that goes down through the center of the extruder. And I can see right here that it's going in too far. So to counteract that, I'm just going to take this out and... Um, I'm going to try this first. Just put on a couple of nuts here on the end. Okay, now that I have the nuts on there, I can grab onto it and I can I can spin this. Um, I think this needs to go in now. Yeah, that's going to need to go in a little bit more. Um, you could adjust this while it's on there too. So I'm just going to turn the large gear a couple of turns. Yeah, so it goes in. Okay, it's pretty close. So I'm going to go ahead and put the washer on the other side here. All right, I'm going to tighten these up. And then I'm going to um, move it outward because it's uh, still not lined up real well. Move it outward some more. Okay, that looks pretty good. So then I can go ahead and loosen these up. And I'm going to tighten this up so that um, it's just tight enough to where it doesn't wiggle and um, can't doesn't uh, vibrate off. So this doesn't need to be tight on here. It just needs to be tight enough so that it doesn't wiggle. You don't want any resistance on here. Okay, and you also don't want it to rub on these bolts here either. And it's just barely, barely missing those. So, okay. It doesn't wiggle and it's not tight enough to where it's causing any resistance. It can still move freely. And it's centered up with the hull. The grooves are centered up with the hull, so... This um, should work out pretty well. Yeah, 
And you know what I just did is I looked down the um, the center here, and I could see that the center of the grooves weren't matching up with the hole down at the bottom. There we go. Okay, that's good. All right. And so the large gear looks good now. The hop bolt looks lined up. Okay, that's good. All right, next, um, what we'll need to do is get the, uh, the idler installed. So the idler is pretty simple. You drop two M3 nuts into the top into the grooves on the top of the extruder. These aren't lock nuts, just regular nuts. And then, um, actually, we'll need to do this part first. Go ahead and put the, uh, the smooth rod with the bearing into the idler. That just pops in. And then you'll place the idler on this extrusion here on the extruder. And then the bolt will go through. You have to hold on to the lock nut. Might have been easier to install this first, actually. You just need to hold it on there until it starts to grab, and then you can use your uh, open box end. Or you can use suppliers, it doesn't really matter. Okay, this doesn't need to be tight, it just needs to hold on to it so it doesn't fall out, because it needs to be able to pivot back and forth. Okay. Now you can use washers on these if you want to. I'm going to put the springs on the large bolts here, but um, I like I don't like to put washers on so that I can use my fingers to tighten or loosen things. Makes it a bit easier. So you just run it through the idler and then into the nut in the extruder, and then go ahead and tighten it up. Um, now you want to, uh, I've read that you want to tighten this up so that you can barely move the idler with your fingers. That feels pretty good right there. It's a little bit tight, tighter. So you can barely move that with my thumb. Okay, so obviously the idler bearing pushes against the filament. The filament gets pushed against the teeth and the hob bolt, and then the teeth are able to grab onto it and push the filament down. The large gear is rubbing on the on the lock nut for the idler. This obviously needs the bolt needs to go on the other side, but I'm not sure if it's gonna I'm gonna be able to thread it in with the large gear and install. So let's see if I can push that through there. Through one of the openings. Oh yeah. yeah. So I was able to push that through one of the openings on the large gear. So the lock nut actually needs to go on the other side. Because it was too, it was too fat. It was rubbing on the uh, on the large gear. Okay, that's good. All right. Now the large gear moves freely without rubbing on anything. 
All right, it's looking pretty good. Pretty happy with that so far. Okay. So let's go ahead and get the um, uh, the stepper motor installed now. Uh, I'm going to install this so that the wires are facing downward. So about right here. We'll be using the um, the 14 millimeter M3 bolts for this with one washer. And you don't want to tighten this up yet um, because you might need to slide it to uh, adjust the tension on the small gear. So just um, thread them in so that so that they're almost almost starting to get tight. You want to make sure that they can still it can still slide around. Okay. And um, I'm going to um, the flat side of the on the on the shaft here for the um, stepper motor is on is facing me here, and then so the hole on the small gear is going to face me. I'm going to put it downward. I need to move the large gears so that you can move those threads to where it lines up with the small gear, and then just go ahead and position that so that um, it's not rubbing. So I've got it, I mean, just about a, like a half a millimeter between the edge of the large gear and uh, the mounted, the mount part of the small gear so it doesn't rub on anything. That seems to be moving around just fine. And uh, so then you can go ahead and use that, um, drop a M3 nut into the uh, small gear and then run uh, a 10 millimeter bolt to lock it into place. And um, if for some reason, if you're not able to get this type of alignment, maybe if the shaft on the stepper motor isn't long enough, um, you can always um, you can always put this the other way. Um, but I didn't have enough room on here to, to do it that way. So this, this is going to work better for me on this install. Okay, and then uh, once you get that on there, then what you need to do is you need to adjust the tension on the stepper motor so that um, you don't have any friction when this is moving. You want it to be nice and smooth, but you don't want a lot of wobble in between the teeth, so you want to get it just right. And then you can go ahead and hold on to it, tighten it up. Now you don't want these teeth to slip, so you need to make sure and um, you know, there's no space in between um, the teeth. So when this turns, it's as soon as it starts turning, it starts moving the large gear. There's no there's no wiggle room there. But also, it's not so tight that it's causing friction and making it difficult for that to spin around. Okay, so that feels really good to me. All right, and um, that's. That takes care of it. That's everything. So here's your fully assembled extruder. Um, later we'll get this mounted to the uh, X carriage and then we'll run the wires down to the electronics. So that's it. This should work out really, really well. And you can play around with it a little bit more, you know, to tweak some of this a little bit if you need to. Just make sure that it's nice and smooth. It doesn't have a lot of friction or a lot of wiggle. There you go. Thanks for watching. Thank you.